So as a background, we're going to look at Claude and how it works, where it comes from, some of the improved capabilities it's got. We'll look at it as a comparison to things like ChatGPT and BARD. And I'll do a bit of a demo of questions and responses and some of the things you can do in, in, in Claude that you may not be able to do in ChatGPT and also show you how in some ways it is a superior network and a superior tool to use instead of ChatGPT. My name is Dante St. James, the uh, expert in residence at Darwin Innovation Hub, working with the Start NT program, helping startups to go from their very initial idea right through to an exit strategy. So that's what we do here. Um, also lecturing at Charles Darwin University in entrepreneurship and design thinking and a certified lead trainer with Meta Australia in New Zealand. But first about... What's a background look at Claude? Well, Claude really was built by a group called Anthropic, uh, founded back in 2021, around about the same time as we're looking at that whole chat GPT thing to build a safe and helpful AI that was based on a, a guiding constitution that took into account safety and ethics. Now, it was focused very much on safety, honesty, and much more nuanced responses. So when it launched in November 2022 to just a limited area of people and not and definitely not to Australia, it was an US only thing, it did give a lot of feedback that people thought that was missing in ChatGPT, where ChatGPT would sort of make up answers to things and sometimes give some hilariously wrong answers to things. Um, if Claude didn't know anything, it would tell you that it didn't know it. It would be honest about it and own up to it rather than trying to make up an answer based upon its large language model. So once that was all sort of worked out and we understood where we were going with, with Claude, then they made it free to try. And you can try it at Claude.ai um, or there is a premium subscription at $20 US per month, which works out to about $31-ish in Australia. So it is a little bit more than ChatGPT. But if you kind of there's some limitations and I'll get into those a little later that you may not really require this unlike chat GPT where the uh, older version of chat GPT is available for free and the most current version is for the paid people there's only one version of Claude so everyone gets the same model you just get different levels of usage with it and availability so what is Claude exactly then it's really in a nutshell an AI conversational assistant created by Anthropic to be helpful harmless and honest. That's the three main areas they, they go on. That's that whole constitutional AI, which talks about the ability for you to not have these hallucinated answers that can give you some very unsafe recommendations sometimes. It also removes that ability for you to be able to say like, here's something I want to make that's harmful. Um, it, it very much stops you from doing that. It's very natural in its conversations. It can admit when it's wrong and when it makes a mistake. And it's a lot more, when they say nuance in its conversations, it feels a little bit more human. It just feels a little bit more like you're talking to a person who isn't just repeating back facts, but adding context to those facts as well. And that's all due to its constitutional AI. It was trained a little bit differently. It has this internal sense of what's right and what's wrong, not just what's fact. Uh, it's modeled after human ethics after all. So not just a lot of text is jumbled in and said to work it out and predict the text. In fact, it's not a predictive text engine at all. It's a little bit different to ChatGPT in that. This allows it to be a better judge of potential harms of its responses. So it looks at not just here's response, but looks at that response could have this context around it. So it's that little bit different and a bit more advanced, if you like, than ChatGPT. But it does also get better over time, as does ChatGPT. It gets like continuing feedback where you like vote up or vote down a response. Or if you need to regenerate, that's usually a sign that the answer wasn't quite right or what you were looking for. And so it's not just this um, fixed set of knowledge from September 2021. It actually uses its user feedback over time to improve its ability to converse with people. It wasn't just trained on text. It was trained on conversations as well, which is why it's that little bit more able to talk to you in a way that feels like you're dealing with a person and not just a robot. So what it's good at is natural language, really, really good at having like a backwards and forwards conversation. It's good at providing definitions, providing summaries of long pieces of text. One thing you can do in the free version of Claude that you cannot do in the free version of ChatGPT is lie in long lots of text or even upload in say a word format or a PDF where it will scan through that document and then provide context within that document. So if you want to say 
summarize this um, this this academic white paper, it can do that really, really well. It's also great at translating between languages. ChatGPT does that as well, and completing what we call logic puzzles or coding problems that you want to may want to um, work on as well. The limitations are that it it doesn't experience the world directly. It's not connected to the internet like Google's Bard is. Although earlier versions of the Bard, although were connected to Google, didn't really know what to do with that information and quite often came up with hilariously wrong answers on things like who won the the, the Melbourne Cup in uh, last year. Even though it knew that, it would give you some other completely different answer. It does rely on training data, so there are some gaps in its knowledge. But like I said, it admits when it's got those gaps. It doesn't just try to hallucinate in or make up some sort of information just to give you an answer. It may also misunderstand confusing questions. And I've hit this uh, very recently myself where I put in a particularly long set of instructions and it got quite confused with that. So ChatGPT is very good at those long lots of instructions. You find that, um, and I'm not talking about long passages of text that you want to do something with. I'm talking about long, like convoluted instructions. Do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. Get it in this context. Do it in this way. Lay it out in this format. ChatGPT is better at that for now than what than what Claude is, but it still can do it to a degree. So the upside is that it provides really um, coherent responses, very nuanced. So it's not just, here's a fact, go and run with that. It gives you a bit more of a conversation, a bit more of a context. Um, it also uh, avoids uh, false expertise. It doesn't try to be an expert in something it's not. Um, it avoids potential harms by understanding what's right and wrong and understands ethical approaches. And it definitely is against breaching user privacy. So when you load something up in the cloud, you're not having that information then fed back into its learning engine. It understands that what you load up is actually private and for you only. So between Claude and ChatGPT and maybe Google Bard, who are the sort of the big three in this area, What's the ups and downs with them? Well, the trouble with ChatGPT is, as we know, it tends to make stuff up. It presents them as facts and gives confidently wrong or even sometimes harmful answers. Um, it's reinforcing the biases in its training data. So if there was biases put in to that training data, then you're going to get that out in the responses. And it also is not great with privacy as the employees of Samsung in South Korea found when they loaded up some, in some specs for some of their products, that stuff became very publicly able to be drawn from ChatGPT as well. So everyone could see right out there what they were doing on their secret and confidential work. Claude is different though, that uses that constitutional AI. It uses those as its guiding principles and training so that it's always looking at privacy, no harm, um, not uh, sort of giving any sort of harmful or ambiguous information, but being very specific, but in a way that feels like it's very human. It also will politely decline or provide better information if you give it something it doesn't really understand or know. Claude also will admit knowledge gaps or ask for clarification when it doesn't know the answer. So it doesn't just go, oh, I'll just guess that with predictive text. It just says, I don't know the answer. Or please clarify this and give me more information. Who is better? Well, I would say ChatGPT is very um, good at complexity. It's very good at saying there's very, very complex queries that you put in, but it's also very flexible with its plugin abilities. It can take those plugins and create DALI 3 images in, in the paid version. It can take that and, and output it in PDFs and all sorts of things with their very big, um, uh, their big uh, uh, plugin ecosystem. Claude, though, is where I look for, for accuracy and honesty, where it's not trying to make things up. It's not really a predictive text engine as much as it is trying to answer in a natural language way from its great big database of information that it's working with. So you ready to take a look inside Claude? Let's see what it looks like on the inside. So I'll just make this a little bit smaller. This is what Claude looks like. So you can see yesterday I was running a whole lot of queries that I put in there, and I'm going to show you how one of those queries might work. We could start with what is the best way to make bun me. So we, um, I got to spell it right first and then it'll come out right. So bun me. And it'll give me a recipe or some kind of response on what to do. So it's a great classic recipe. It gives me the baguette, the mayo, the magic seasoning sauce, all those little pieces that are a very traditional Vietnamese pork roll. So it's a really, you know, what you'd expect. And you get this from somewhere like um, ChatGPT as well. It's not going to be that different to what you'll get from them. But just like ChatGPT, I can add more context to this. I can say, make this vegetarian. And then we take out all the um, the, the, the meat content. 
and it's going to say, okay, great, we're going to take out the pork, we're going to take out all that stuff, and we're going to turn into pickled carrots and daikon radish, um, you know, thinly sliced jalapenos. It's it's put in what it's done instead, instead of um, the, the pork, it said, well, let's do some tofu, some sauteed mushrooms, eggplant, avocado slices, all that sort of stuff. So you'd get that kind of output pretty easily from ChatGPT as well. Uh, and then you could say, well, um, you know, turn this into um, a recipe in, let's say, Mandarin. So it's going to then convert that into a recipe, and then it's going to create it in Mandarin, and there's your output. So you've got that output in another language. Now, again, this is not something that's unique to Claude. You can do this just as easily in something like ChatGPT or Google Bard. It's very good at outputting these things, converting things to other languages. You're not going to have a problem with that. Where you might start to find that the chat sheet, uh, that Claude's a little bit different, if I start over here and just say, okay, um, tell me a story about a little boy who found adventure in his own backyard. And this is where... I think that the writing style of Claude is just that little bit better than I think ChatGPT is. It's a bit more creative. Um, now, this one is a bit like, here's a story about a little boy who found a venture in his own backyard. It's pretty obvious. But then it's bringing in a lot of uh, dialogue. So use your imagination, mum, because imagination is mum suggested. I'm sure you can find the venture right here at home. And so it's doing a little story in that. And I think it just paints a, lo a lovely picture of it. You can do the same with poetry and all that. What I'm looking at, though, is that this um, it still produces some of that predictability that ChatGPT does. But notice how, unlike ChatGPT, there's paragraphs that are very short, some that are very long. Uh, it has a several, um, it has quite a degree of burstiness to it, and it kind of writes in the way that a human would write. You know, for instance, where you'd write maybe a short paragraph here, a sort of medium level paragraph there, but a huge paragraph here, and these. Sentences aren't all exactly the same. ChatGPT likes to write things in very even sentences, where this is a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more random in the way it does its lengths of sentences, which makes it feel that it's a little bit more creative. I think you can then convert that to another kind of story, break it into fifteen social media posts or Instagram story prompts, and you could do all that sort of stuff with it. But the one thing I want to show you with Claude that I think is its killer feature is the ability for in the free version to upload a document. So I'm going to upload, let's just say from here, uh, what did I have yesterday that was really good? I had like a workshop summary for an international social media marketing conference. So what I want to do is turn this into a workshop outline. So what I've done there is done a summary of a workshop that I'm going to be running next year. So turn this into a workshop outline uh, for a workshop that will last for two hours. So it's it's very good at this kind of context. So what's doing is now uploading that document. It's scanned it. See how quick this is? And now it's saying, okay, our introduction for 10 minutes, our landscape around the world in 20 minutes deep dives into each of those platforms, taking a break, social media advertising around the world over 20 minutes. It gives you a really good outline for this. Um, and if I, it, to be honest, ChatGPT would do this as well, except that in the free version, you can't upload that document from elsewhere or any sort of PDF. It doesn't read documents unless you get the paid version with plugins that will do that. So it's, it's not, you know, without a definite advantage here, that you can upload some documentation that gives context to a topic and then you can extract information from that, summarize it, expand it. In fact, what I'll do now is uh, pick out this social media landscape around the world and I'll go expand that social media landscape around the world. And so it gives me an expanded outline just for that section. And it's giving me information, Facebook and Meta, widely used across Africa, not as popular in China due to government restrictions. TikTok, massive growth in, in Asia, especially in China, but it's a different name, Dayu. Um, you got popular with young audiences. YouTube uh, remains very high globally. Local popular apps, uh, Sina Weibo in China, Kakao in, in Korea, VK in Russia. So it's giving us some really good information in there. Now, I didn't give it this information. That wasn't dragged from the document I loaded up, but it's looking at the context of the document I loaded up to say, ah, this is some extra stuff you're going to do. This makes sense. And it puts it together into a really, really easy to read thing. Now I can say, convert um, these points 
into slides to use in the um, in the in the uh, workshop, or say slide points. This points into slide points to use in a doc. So that's what I want to do is, is put it in a variation that then gives me something to put into it. So it's pretty much just copied it because it's the same information. But I can go into um, expand slide one information and give a source. If I want to give a source of that, it'll pick out slide one. And then it's saying, yep, Facebook remains the top. It's giving us some numbers there. And there's a quarter, it'll be a quarter for 2022. So it's giving us some sort of uh, some sort of source there of its information. And look at that source is Meta's quarter for 2022 earnings report. So we've immediately got an actual source to look at that it's given us that we can go and provide a background to that. So what we'll find is in the free version of ChatGPT, that won't be able to be done because it can't read the internet. So interestingly, this has given us something from the last quarter of last year where ChatGPT would have information that's cut off at September 2021 and not then be able to provide a source for it because it can't actually tell you where that source has come from until you go to the paid version of ChatGPT, which includes a web search with Bing in it that they can then provide the source. So if you're finding you need that extra bit of sourcing and, con and context and information being cited from a, from a particular source, but you don't want to pay for ChatGPT to get it, this might be a good way of getting around that. Just bear in mind, though, that even though this all looks really nice to use and we can do a lot of really great stuff in it, there are some limitations in here as well. And that's where we sort of look between the the, the free version and the paid version. So the free version gives you uh, 100 messages per eight hours. So um, I would probably run out of that quite quickly because I'm doing a lot of backwards and forwards. So each reply I give it, it gives me a new message. That's another message. Um, but there's also no access when peak service times happen. So when the Americans wake up and, and it becomes very busy, you're going to find it really hard to be able to use it at those times. Um, I've struck that once in all the time I've used it. Uh, it doesn't get anywhere near as busy as ChatGPT, so you're probably going to have a little bit of extra um, ability to get in there. The paid version then, as I said before, is at $20 a month US dollars, which is about $31 a month, gives you 500 messages per eight hours. I'd struggle to get to that level, so it's not going to happen in a hurry. Um, but it also gives you access when service is busy. Those peak times won't affect you. You skip the queue and go in. Um, like I said, though, it doesn't happen that often. Now, the access to new features may be something you do. But I would have to say that if you had to choose between a paid version of ChatGPT and a free version of Claude, most of the time, for most people, Claude would come out on top. Its answers are just as good, a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more creative, a little bit easier to read in some cases without you having to add lots of extra prompting. Um, but it also gives you enough usage of the full model. You don't have to go and pay extra to get plugins and that. They don't really have plugins now. Um, that's not really the pathway they're going down. So it's a very different approach to it if you're looking for something a little bit more ethical, a little bit more easy to read, and a little bit more... Um, accessible and, and trustworthy, then Claude may be where you go. So the address to go to is Claude, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I. The C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I is where you pick that one up.